my studio. This is a place of action. All bits of life complexity had happened in this place. But now, it's time to make it better. Today I'm revealing a part that you've never seen before. I came to this place more than eight years ago, and it has seen lots of people. Has been shared, has been lonely, has been fully and empty. Eight years, and it still has been an embryonic stage. I needed courage to drill a wall, to sacrifice the look of the wood, and for a long time we have been only scratching its skin. Masking tape, duct tape, double-sided tape, everywhere. We didn't want to hurt. I couldn't leave the space. I couldn't fully experience what I needed to experience. I couldn't embrace the space and make it real, and I couldn't stand it anymore. So I made the first hole, then the second. Then I started to absorb a little more each time from what the space would give me. And now, it is time. It's time to make it real, to make it better, make it more functional, happier, more evolved. Allow space to be space and organize physical space to reach out a better organized mind. Take the challenge and fully experience it. Not just the floor. Hurt the material and drink from its life. Stop accumulating endless objects on the floor. Do what you see. Do better. Build the space around you instead of letting it be an infinite barrier. Give it your time and effort. Fall in love with the space again and conquer it. I want to raise the bed to a platform so I can use that floor space to work. I made a small scale representation of the corner joints and chose our flap joints to connect all the studs. I started by cleaning and squaring one end on each piece. I'm using 11 by 7 centimeters beams, which should translate to something like 3 by 5 for the imperial measurement users. The final size of the platform will be 250 by 130 centimeters. I cut every lap joint with a sliding miter saw, but I needed to put a little piece of wood as a depth stopper since I'm using quite thick material. I adjusted progressively the depth until I got it right, and once I got it, I found that the blade couldn't travel all the way back. This meant I needed to bring the fence forward, so I simply picked up a few strips of MDF and stick them to the actual fence. This method of making half laps is really quick once you get the first one right. Some cleanup with a chisel makes everything work fine in the end. The two legs are the only parts that get a double half lap and I just needed to readjust the depth stop. Let's see how this goes together. Now for the height. 
I'm pretty small and I also want to preserve the upper height from the platform to the ceiling as much as possible. So I'll just make sure that me and my hair can fit under the platform. For these middle stretchers, I use the stop lock on the Marisa fence to keep the half lap size consistent on each end. But I've been kind of contemplating the idea of just only making video. I used bolts in every joint that were threaded into the wood itself, and they seem a pretty sturdy option. I wanted the heads and washers to go below the surface, so I made recesses with the forcing bit before drilling the holes for the bolts. I aligned the joints the best I could and drilled the rest of the material on the other stud with a slightly smaller diameter bit to keep some extra wood to receive the threads. I flipped the structure over to see if everything was good and detached the legs so I could move the structure around. This is a self-portrait I made in 2011 and this is a 20 minute exposure photography of this exact same corner back in January 2010. This is not working. Take off the shirt and try something else. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, looks like it is definitely not working. Uh, it is way too big and heavy for me to lift up and attach the legs. Uh, I need to call that. So? Then I screw the platform structure to the walls so I could remove the block of wood. I sanded everything to 120 grit using the Skill Fox 6 in 1 multi sander. You can attach a round plate for random orbit sand, which is more conventional, and change the direction of the triangle plate. But then you can get these really cool smaller attachments that you can use specifically for cylindrical or rounded edges or to get into really tight spaces for removing all finish on complex objects or just sand tricky pieces after assembly. Now let's wrap up the sanding and break the sharp edges because I want to keep a crisp edge look but don't want to cause too much damage if someone bumps the head on the structure. Which is very possible. Thank you so much Skillerup for supporting this project. You guys go check out their website because they got some good stuff there. And stick around for episode 2. I'll catch you later.